And welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. It's Tuesday. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. Hey. How you doing? How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm tired, but what else is new? What? I'm good. Today we're talking about some studies saying people want to see. Yeah, what game. gamers wow. really want. What a surprise. Yeah. Um, also, information about modern hardware. Remember they got mm. sued, they were getting sued by Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Well, they're fighting back apparently. Oh. Uh, what else? Other stuff. A lot of little things. There's a lot of little things. It's a lot of little things, but I feel like they add up to a big thing. Okay. In a way. Okay. What that big thing is. I don't know. We're going to learn You'll a lot to watch of lessons find out. Yes. from today's mm -hmm. episode. So, I want to ask you, Sunday, you <laughs> seem to have had quite the day. So, and I want to, I want to know about this. Okay, so, first of all, you're familiar with the Criterion Collection, yes? Yes. Okay, for those Movie of you who don't know, stuff. Criterion Collection, they are a DVD label, a Blu-ray label, where they put out... DVDs and Blu-rays of classic films, foreign films, weird art house films, uh, your Citizen Kane's, your Seven Samurai's, your uh, the Royal Tenenbaums type stuff. Movies like that. Um, they're really high quality discs. They got a lot of great bonus features. Um, they, in their office in Manhattan, they have a closet of all of their uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. Oh, that's in Manhattan? That's in Manhattan, yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> And I now have more questions. <laughs> so, uh, so in their office, they have a, uh, a closet where all their Blu-rays are. And what they will often do is they will film actors and directors and producers. And one time Hideo Kojima, they will yeah. film them in the closet, like picking out movies and talking about them and talking about how much they like them and whatnot. Um, it's so like popular online that uh, for New York Film Festival, which was the past two weeks, they recreated the closet in the back of a truck and parked it outside of Alice Tully Hall. So you can just go there and pick out movies from the closet. So these are all famous people in the yes. closet, in the real closet. Yeah. I am confused because they had a truck, but the closet is just in Manhattan. Yeah. So the was the idea of the truck is they're going to travel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. All they're right. gonna take it, you Makes know, a little on tour. More so they were just launching it at the New York Film Festival. Now, the other question that I had was, why wouldn't they just do this at Comic Con? And that has been answered by the fact that the line was so long. It was very long. Yeah. And like, I knew the line was long because, like, I saw like tweets and stuff from like the the first few days. But I'm like, oh, it's the last day. How long could it be? Wound up being like eight fucking hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Absolutely it was ridiculous. and like you know by the time i got there i hadn't eaten all day i hadn't gone to the bathroom i'm fine i finally get up to the truck you only get three minutes in the truck that is not a lot of time and three it's minutes? very intimidating once you actually get in the truck you spent eight hours yeah for a little three minute extravaganza in this yeah in this basically truck. Yeah. Also, you know what? This collection looks kind of small. Now that I'm looking at uh, these famous people in it, is that the whole collection? Is this one little corner of the closet? It's they have like over a thousand movies in the collection. Okay. So like that's just um I bet we could fit we have over a thousand games in our collect. Well, yeah. somewhere around a thousand some, games. And we could probably fit it in a closet yeah. like that. So yeah, it's not the it's not the largest collection in the world. And it's very like, you know, laser focused on very mm -hmm. specific types of movies um but i feel like had they given it five minutes it would have been like more exciting but at the same time i would have never gotten in there right um as another thing too so the whole point is like they'll film you like they film you know the people in the closet and they said on the website you can bring your camera or your phone and you can use our wall mount to film to like film it yourself and take the video home so i brought my camera Apparently, I was the only person all weekend to bring an actual camera because it threw them off. Wait, what camera did you bring? I brought my Canon, my my R four, my my R. 
Oh, yeah. That's, not, that's a normal camera. I know. I thought you were going to say you brought your C300. No, no, I no, was like, oh, no, I wasn't going to do that. Ridiculous. But, like, I brought it, and they, like, weren't sure what to do. What do you mean? Like These are film people. I know, like, because they didn't have space for an actual camera. They just had a it's phone mount. It's not that mount. big of a camera. I know. Luckily, I had my tripod, <laughs> so we were able to set it up just under their camera. Okay. But it cut off my head. So you basically just get my waist <laughs> down. So I'm so happy I lugged Did that around. Did they also film it themselves? They also no? filmed it. Okay. But so you got two camps. Yeah. But okay. I don't know where that footage is. That's the criterion. <laughs> Maybe they'll post it. Maybe. So. When they realize you're a big shot YouTuber. Yeah. I wore the hat. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, oh yeah. God, Wolf dead. This guy's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, what is this stuff? So they give you a bag. That's that's the big thing. Uh, so and then the rest is okay. they take a Polaroid of what you got you in the closet with uh, all I'm your stuff. I'm imagining they do that with everybody. Yes. Um, and the three film they let you pick three films uh, for forty percent off. So my three films were Harakiri, a great samurai film, one of my favorite samurai films of all time. Wonderful film about honor and loyalty and respect. Uh, one of the best choreographed fights um, in the swordsman genre below that is sancho the bailiff uh another japanese foreign film uh one of the saddest movies i've ever seen in my life but also one of the most hopeful movies i've ever seen in my life definitely worth checking out and then just below that underneath was inside lewin davis it's the second time I'm hearing about that movie today because um i didn't get it for the movie though i got it for because this is the version where one of the bonus features is the concert film another place another time which my father-in-law fucking loves oh okay it's it's actually a really good concert film so they let you so, buy movies they let you buy movies oh, there okay. yeah now right. granted these are available at barnes and noble <laughs> and occasionally they go for 50 percent off so that's it's just amazing to me that you were willing to wait for yeah that, for that long i look if had i known it was going to be like eight hours i wouldn't have done it yeah. <laughs> but i'm glad i went is this uh, the most you've ever waited on a line for something yeah yeah. yeah, and it wasn't easy because I had on one side of me, I had a really loud guy, like just being <laughs> just like kind of getting on everyone's nerves. On the other side of me, I had like three Zoomers who just had the worst opinions about movies. The longest so. I've ever waited, three hours maybe for Mario Odyssey yeah. to play it at E3, but that was for a video. Well, what was cool though <laughs> was at one point, this is towards the end, because it was the New York Film Festival and David Cronenberg director of the fly history of violence uh he had a movie at new york film festival and they were able to they wanted him to see the truck mm. basically cut everybody in line so that he could get a chance in the truck so they actually like brought him over to us and like introduced oh, it to nice. him. yeah so that's cool that was cool so was it worth it <laughs> i think the idea was cool i think there's a better way to do what they did does that make sense absolutely yeah 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 i don't think they were ready for <laughs> no that many people to want to mm -hmm. be in this thing yeah um i'm also more so curious about the logistics of getting there at 11 o'clock after not ha after not having breakfast or anything i mean i had breakfast oh, okay. but like i didn't eat anything you else didn't after. account for being on a line exactly. for eight hours <laughs> to their credit they passed around snacks but pretzels and, they and pass snickers around a little trash bag to shit in <laughs> <laughs> pretzels and snickers can only hold me so much right there was a halal truck there but like i was afraid it was gonna make me shit yeah line, I wouldn't so know. i'm surprised like the people didn't band together and like start holding spots for pissers i stuff. know yeah I mean, I'm sure they would have. I was this close to Uber eat, eating uh, something, having something Uber eat. I something thought about make. that, too. Yeah. I was like, he's probably going to Uber eat yeah. something. <laughs> um, but yeah, that well, was a thing. I'm well, glad I did it. I don't know if I would do it again. God bless. <laughs> yeah. God bless. Uh, hey, anyway. Uh, we're a video game podcast. We're a video game podcast. <laughs> Let's talk about the free games you can get right now. Yes. So this Nintendo, those sneaky bastards, right after last week's Wolf Den podcast announced two games that they are adding to Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. They are two Game Boy Advance games, and they're F-Zero games. F-Zero Grand Prix and F-Zero Climax. <laughs> That's a great name. Yeah. So I'm showing it on screen, but the footage is going to be choppy because yeah. I'm using Discord on browser. So, okay. Because <laughs> the regular Discord wasn't working. So sorry, videos yeah. are going to be choppy. So sorry, it's not. Uh, it's um, F Zero GP Legends and F Zero Climax. Now, F Zero GP Legends is based on the 
for kids animated series that was airing at the same time as Kirby right back at you. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. So that's the time to that. Now, F-Zero Climax was never released in North America. So it's, yeah. it's a Japan exclusive. So this is the first time you're getting a new F-Zero game uh, in North America. Is it in Japanese? You know, I don't think so. Is that, that's the one that's based on the cartoon? I think they're both based on the cartoon. Okay. But GP Legends is what we got in North in North America. I th- usually when they release um import games over here, they translate it. I think. I think it's a huge deal if they do that. Yeah, and I haven't really heard anybody say anything. Right. I mean, there's been times where they import games that just aren't translated. There was one recently that was uh, it looked like Indiana Jones. It was just in Japanese, okay. but but there was like nothing really in it that needed to be translated. It was yeah. just the title screen was just Japanese, and that was it. Okay. Um, just cases like the what was it? Uh, uh, Fire Emblem. Yes, yes. that one. When they translated, it was a huge. It was such yeah. a huge deal. They didn't want to fucking put it on Switch Online and have make you pay a whole sixty dollars for it. And then it was a time was. thing, so they were like discontinued it yeah, after so now a you while. Can't even play it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, F Zero Climax, the last F Zero game. Uh, for the next 19 years. So there has not been an F-Zero game since this one. I believe it. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many Smash Brothers. Right. <laughs> uh, Key Code says the Starfy games were only in Japanese. Okay. They released those, and you can only play them in Japanese. They didn't have translations in the American eShop. There's a couple Switch Online games that were JP only, but didn't get English Patches, Mario's Super P Cross for SNES. It was one of those. Yeah, just Japanese. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's possible this is just going to be entirely in Japanese. I'm a little interested now that I know that it's based off of the uh, cartoon. Yeah. Have you? Did you watch the cartoon? Not really. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> I just saw clips of like him like Falcon punching like a planet or something yeah. <laughs> like fucking crazy. Um. Anyway. So. There's your Switch Online games. Uh, also, I forgot to be in the labs, but we got Farmer Gooch with 10 bucks. Thanks. He's single-handedly uh, supporting the... He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's, our, he's our number one investor in this podcast. Uh, Gimp Dirt with the subscription who says, yo, 11 months of thinking, damn, Will looks like Jason Lee. Love you guys. <laughs> Jason Lee, like the like skateboarder? Brody? <laughs> uh, all right. We will now talk about uh, data suggests most players prefer single player games. New study claims. Now, I saw you, you see this headline and you immediately think to yourself, duh. Yeah. Everybody, we've been saying for years, we just, we want these companies to focus on single player games because that's what we like playing like it seems obvious to us because like that's what we like yeah but 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 my second thought Mm -hmm. right after seeing this headline without reading the article was there's gonna be something about this study (laughs) that makes it weird yeah because i'd imagine most people most game most people watching this Mm -hmm. single player gamers right they want to they want to play single player games right most People playing games in the world. Mm-hmm. You include mobile games, probably a heavy yeah. dip on single player. If you take out multi, uh, mobile games, everyone's playing multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. A majority of people are probably playing multiplayer games. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the last few years, the video game industry se- has seemed to have been obsessed with building always online live service multiplayer experiences, and many of those live games, like Concord, have failed to find much success. Success. Uh, now, a new survey reveals that might be because most folks prefer playing single player games. As reported by GameIndustry.biz, a new survey from uh, Media Research suggests that 53% of people who play video games prefer playing by themselves and don't want to play online PvP or co op games. Uh, according to Media, in 2023 and 2024, the survey asks a range of players from the US, Australia, the UK, Canada, France, Germany, Poland, Brazil, South South Africa, and Turkey 
about their various video game preferences. And yeah, it turns out most people like playing single player games. However, digging into the data reveals some more interesting findings. Here we oh, go. Yeah, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. For example, it seems that the older you are, the more likely you are to avoid online games and stick to single player adventures. 74% of gamers over the age of 55 told media that they prefer single player games over co-op and online PVP. In fact, the younger you are, the more likely you are to want to play with other people. Only 30% of players under the age of 19 prefer playing solo. Okay, so first of all, I'm giggling at the image of someone over 55 playing video games. I don't know why <laughs> I shouldn't be. Right. It's totally reasonable. Yeah. But for some reason, that's interesting. There's like some like TikTok accounts or some like Twitch accounts where yeah. it's like an old guy playing like Counter-Strike mm -hmm. or something. It exists. There's yeah. Pe there's people out there doing that. But it, this also makes total sense. The older you get, Unfortunately, usually as a man specifically, yeah. the less friends you get, <laughs> so you're not gonna have even the people less to play friends with. you get. But also too, like you know, your reflexes deteriorate, and you just don't have yeah, the the skill or the patience really to you know combat with you know younger, more talented yeah. players. You're not so gonna like, be competitive. You'd rather just like you know. Also too is like stressful, so you'd rather just like sit down and relax. You know, after a long day at work or dealing with you know kids and bills and whatnot, you want to like just escape yeah. and like being in a multiplayer experience you can't really do that and it feels a little easier to jump into something you can pause yeah and stuff than it would yeah. be to commit to like a 20 minute uh like match or absolutely yeah. or, or a, a long multiplayer play session yeah so i understand that mm -hmm. that that's starting to make a little bit of sense yeah oh, uh, they have a nice little graph yeah Another interesting data point, 58% of mobile gamers prefer single player titles, like you said. Okay. Uh, a ton of mobile games feature online uh, gameplay and online social connections, but it seems a lot of people just want to chill and play Bellatro on their phones uh, while waiting got, for the I bus or to listening to a that. podcast. I got a lot to say about Bellatro, but okay. we'll, we'll okay. talk about that later. Uh, media says that younger players were more likely to be able to get friends together regularly to play a various live service games, while people 25 and older had busier lives that interfere with multiplayer gaming. Media also says that younger gamers like to take vacations from games like Fortnite and Apex Legends, suggesting that publishers and devs should try to release a new single player game towards the end of live service seasons when players are more likely to look for a break. Uh, of course, while this data shows the single player is still a very popular type of video game, uh, this writer doubts publishers will stop pub uh, will stop pushing for live service hits. The reality is that single player games are still expensive to make and take years to develop, just like live service titles. But if a live service game can build a large audience, you can spend years supporting it and making a lot of money while not having to make another big single player experience. And even though history is littered with dying or dead live service games and data shows players like single player one and done adventures, the promise of more money is likely too alluring for most publishers in 2024. So... Another thing about this is 53% of gamers say single player is the preferred way to play. 53? That's more than half. It's only 3% <laughs> more than 50%. Right. But that's, that's... <laughs> that's really not as much as I was expecting, especially given the headline of the article. But it's still a majority. It's just not a lot. <laughs> it's just not that big of a majority it's, to like eat, to be that excited about. But I think it is because it shows that like it that because like the publishers want you to think that online is the way to go. Online multiplayer is the future, yeah. but like clearly it's not. Yeah, it's the it behooves the publishers to want to put all this money into into uh multiplayer games if you're only looking at pure numbers yeah because they want to get the breakout hit yeah but when every game is trying to be that breakout hit the chances are extremely low that you're gonna have yeah something and like great 53 percent of people prefer single player games so like if all you put out is online games you're alienating 53 percent of the population right there they're not going to want to. But if like, you put out a single player game, you're going to alienate 47%. <laughs> but like they already have their games. Like they're playing yeah. their games. Yeah, and that's and the thing. According is that, to the article, they take breaks from their game. Yeah. So like when they're 
you know, getting burnt out by it, they stop, they go play a single player game, and then when they're ready, they hop back in. Yeah. Uh it I, I think the 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 moral to publishers should be to not shoehorn in things just to try to make it appeal to exactly. as many people yeah. as possible. If you want to make a multiplayer game, go make the multiplayer game. Yeah. Just make it unique and interesting, yeah. and then people will play it or buy it. Or, and if you make it bad, people will not want it. Right. But a lot of people still want single-player games, and mm -hmm. a lot of developers want to make single-player games. Taking a single-player game and shoehorning in some bullshit multiplayer just because you think that people want to play it, not going to work. Yeah. And the, and the developer is going to have a bad time making it because the game doesn't... Yeah. The game wasn't built around it. Yeah. You're just shoehorning it in. And I think there, you know, there are cases to be made where a game can be have both a single player and a multiplayer function. Yeah. Like history is littered with games that have successfully done both. Halo, Call of Duty, of uh, Gears of War, you know, all of those types of games. Grand Theft Auto nowadays. But that's I was trying to think, what is a modern example? Yeah. And there really isn't, but Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is. Would but be Grand one. Theft Auto is old now. Right. What else? As a good single player and a multiplayer that's come out recently, though. I mean, I guess the only one that's still carrying the torch is Call of Duty. Because, like, people people always say, like, they don't like the single player. But, like, people do buy it for the single player. And, like, they will play. The single player campaign of Call of Duty is always talked about. There's always something in the campaign that people remember. Throughout all of them, there's always that one moment that people are like, oh, yeah, that was cool. Or whatnot. The last year's one, everybody hated. Right. Everybody last year's one was a bad example because it wasn't supposed to be a full Call of Duty release. Yeah. It was just supposed to be an expansion pack. And then notable idiot Bobby Kodak's like, no, full release. Figure it out. I got my Microsoft money coming. <laughs> Golden parachute, my fat ass way. Uh, Dragon says, all of us of a certain age will play to see how they deal with 9-11. That's... Um, they got my seventy dollars. Oh man, I'm um, I'm ready for that. You tell, like, I'll I'll wait. That one you, moment is gonna you be. You tell me how it happens. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I guess Call of Duty is a good modern example yeah. of a game. But I mean, Call of Duty also they dump a ton of money. Call yeah, of every single year. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Jason Schreier, the reporter. He's got that book about blizzard coming out mm -hmm. he's been on a lot of podcasts recently not <laughs> ours for some reason um but he's been talking about the book and just like the push and pull between like blizzard and activision mm -hmm. and how like blizzard was really more like you know games uh as an art form and activision was really games as a business and then like just the push to like just try and get something yeah. out every year like the mandate to get something out every year yeah so, it's really weird to look at the games industry as a whole right now compared to like what we grew up with. Yeah. Especially this year. There doesn't seem to be like, like, first of all, you have these big publishers that are trying to like mandate what these developers do with their games. Yeah. So they could try to make as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. But also like that, that's making a lot of games worse than they should be. Oh yeah. You got some massive, hits some the games are more popular now than they've ever been and some games are just these huge worldwide phenomena that everybody's trying to emulate and failing miserably yeah at. but back back in our day <laughs> you had these like wonderful unique like art pieces and we're getting less of them yeah the ones that we're getting are smaller games yeah you have games like fucking Bellatro. It's a card game <laughs> and everyone's planning and buying it. Yeah. Uh, it's like solitaire, basically. Yeah. It's basically solitaire. <laughs> um, I will say, like, uh, while I was waiting eight hours in line, I did bring my Amber Neck with me. Okay. So I did have something to keep me distracted. And I was playing uh, Pokemon Fire Red and I was playing, like, Chrono Trigger, you know? And th there's, like, a simplicity to those games and, like, you know, an artfulness to those games that like could never be made like today. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, they're Pokemon, but it's literally just the same game, just buggier every year. Yeah. They, so, they, and like, but like Chrono Trigger was like so interesting because like, you know, it's a turn based RPG, you know, not my cup of tea, but there was like a, you know, there was just something to it that like, 
you know, a modern publisher, a modern Square Enix would never want to do. I like how games sort of uh, found their space over the years and they kind of unified in certain things. Like now mm -hmm. we kind of expect certain elements of game design to be the way that they are like yeah. uh the yellow paint so like we yeah. know where to go um what else uh, i mean most of its control schemes like con yeah most control schemes are pretty unified there's like little changes here and there but for the most part everything works kind of the same yeah but when games were trying to find their footing you had like in the playstation one playstation two era you have a lot of games that went wild and went off the rails yeah. and all acted a little differently and it changed the gameplay so much mm -hmm. that made it so unique and made it fun. And now every single like first person shooter moves the same, you know? Uh there's like not a lot of nuance to the way the different ways that you play all of these different games. Mm -hmm. They all pretty much feel exactly the same. Going back and playing like retro games you really feel like it might be off-putting at first because like you're playing Goldeneye and you're yeah. like the axes are off like this moving around feels weird but once you get used to it and you and you delete modern games from your brain you can go down a rabbit hole of like beautiful game design yeah like win back <laughs> if if they release that game today people would say this is the worst game right. that has ever existed <laughs> but you figure out the controls and how the game wants you to move around, and it is like v fun and interesting. Yeah, the way that, that the way that their brains decided this is how we're gonna move around in a yeah. 3D space. Compare that to um, Horizon Zero Dawn, which I'm currently trying to work my way through now. That's that's become like the standard open world game with crafting and collectibles and whatnot. And like it just feels like every other game of that yeah. type that I've played already, you know. It's just it's littered with stuff on the map that like half of it's inconsequential, but like the half that is consequential, like you don't know what to do first or what's important. Yeah, you know, it just it throws so much at you to try and like get you to stay there for hours on end, but none of it's really like grabbing me in any real significant way. Yeah. I feel similarly to Star Wars Outlaws. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much the same as a lot of other single player experiences, mm -hmm. except that it's in Star Wars right. universe. And that's literally enough. That's yeah. literally enough for me to right. want to play it is, is, this, is the setting. Because the story's not great, <laughs> and the rest of it is just a Ubisoft game. Yeah. Uh, I do kind of like that it, a lot of it's a stealth game, even though the stealth is really janky. We've grown up with a lot of right. janky stuff. Well, I've heard they're they're pushing out like big patches in the next few weeks to like try to fix a lot of the jank. But that's okay. another problem too because that... it's inherently janky the way you're supposed to play the right. game. So. But that game probably could have benefited from just a, a month or month or two of polish. Yeah. But because it's a Ubisoft game and it has to hit a certain release date yeah. at a certain time. It has to get pushed out by then. Or, sorry, correction, it has to hit three days earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But no, let's wait for the actual release date, quote-unquote, to put out the day one patch. Yeah. It's like this mentality that, you know, is what's hurting the single-player experience. This, like, this business-minded mentality. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you got publishers trying to shoehorn in stuff that doesn't yeah. belong there like multiplayer oh, I'm sure and live if Ubisoft stuff. had their way they would have shoehorned in a multiplayer there's service. microtransactions like you can buy outfits and I stuff. believe it uh, but they're not that interesting yeah. uh, although I will say there are some bland outfits that you get in the game uh, so yeah they you got publishers shoehorning in uh, multiplayer stuff because they think multiplayer is important you yeah. also have publishers trying to be like uh, we gotta release the game three days early so that people have to pay extra to, uh -huh. to, to play it that's also ruining things. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, Ubisoft must have learned something because they delayed Assassin's Creed. Yeah. By like a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that things change there. I think you could still get that early though. I think they're still releasing that early with the yeah, I think like the $100 doing... version yeah, I think is so, yeah. a little early. Although it is coming day and date on Steam. Yes. So that's cool. Um, so they learned one lesson. <laughs> my point was this year, I was looking, I was trying to think, like, what's my game of the year pick for this year? Mm -hmm. Like, nothing that came out. 
like nothing yeah, good. Yeah, I know people are saying uh, Astrobot. Yeah, there are there are always those people who say Zelda. Okay, so um, Astrobot is really good. Yeah. I stopped playing it. I I, okay. I I got a little. Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff started coming out, and I started like moving my attention to that stuff. But also, I just kind of have no interest, and right. I think a large portion of that is because I just don't want to play on my PlayStation. Right. So that was good, but I don't think it's game of the year. Zelda is actually really good. Yeah. I really like the new mm -hmm. Zelda game. Uh, I've been playing it on my Odin 2 Mini. Ooh, so scandal. I've been, I've, yeah, there's a big scandal there. Uh, and it's really good. It is, it is flawed. It is a Zelda game, and it did really piss me off at one point. Yeah. I I was playing it, and I did a whole like little mini dungeon. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you have to light two torches. Yeah. Very clearly, in the beginning of the dungeon, it's like, go over there and light those two torches. So mm -hmm. you do a whole puzzle, and then you light the torches. Nothing happens. Okay. And I'm like, maybe I'm maybe this is broken because i'm playing it on an emulator mm -hmm. i'm trying everything i'm looking around i can't figure it out i look it up and i see that there's supposed to be a person next to the torches that you yeah. talk to and i'm like that person's not there what is something glitched and i was like looking it up i was i was about to like type in the yuzu subreddit like yeah. what's wrong blah blah and then after like hours of me researching this i just dial it back and it turns out before you go to that area mm -hmm. You're supposed to just talk to a different person. Uh, That's the Zelda trap that you fall into. Right. Where I didn't talk to the specific person, yeah. and I did the quest too early, so now the whole thing's invalidated, and I have to do it yeah. again because I I didn't realize I had to talk to a specific yeah. person. So, and apparently, a lot of I mentioned this on stream the other day, and a lot of people uh, had the same issue in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise. I think the game's fun because it's just a Zelda game, but you summon things. And right. the, the whole game basically turns into a puzzle. Right. Every little interaction you get into is like a little mini puzzle. So okay. that's really fun. Star Wars Outlaw is not a great game. Right. That's not a game of the year game. Uh, UFO 50, have you heard of that? I've heard of it. Like I haven't ex like, had a chance to like mess around with it. That's just a game that came out uh, very recently, like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it is... Uh, it's a pack of 50 games that are supposed to be like NES games. Okay. Uh it's it's they're not really mini. Like like they they're they're, they're 50 basically mini games that right, emulate yeah. uh generic uh NES games. But a lot of them have like a lot of depth to them. Okay. So the game's kind of huge. Right. So if you're into like NES games or NES styled games, mm -hmm. uh there's some great stuff. There's some that are not that great, but yeah. there's a lot that are like really good. Uh, so that game's sick. Okay. Uh, and that I've heard some people say that that's their game of the year. Oh wow. Uh, my game of the year might be either Zelda or Balatro. Okay. Now that's on Apple Arcade. Yeah. And that's a card game. Yeah. It's poker, basically. You're f we in this world where we've got these giant publishers throwing yeah. billions of dollars around. Or live service garbage. Yeah. A card game is going to take <laughs> game of the... Uh, fuck it. It's literally yeah. poker. It's literally just poker. But it's great. Yeah. The problem with that game is that I've been playing it on my phone because it's on Apple Arcade. Yeah. And then I was like, it's on Mac as well. Yeah. So I downloaded it on my Mac. And then I saw my save file didn't cloud right. save. And I was like, oh, I want it to cloud save. So I went to my phone and I turned on iCloud. I actually paid extra because my iCloud was full. Yeah. I was like, this will get me to pay extra. Turn on iCloud. Mm -hmm. It cloud saved the Mac save oh. that didn't have any data. Mm. I lost my whole oh. save. So fuck that game. Game sucks. Fuck that You're game. Out of never playing that game again. Honestly, the game's a roguelike, so like, yeah. I didn't really lose that much. But uh, I'll probably keep playing it. It is way more fun than it has any right being even though it's just a poker game. Right. So. It may be on the Apple version of Steam. Let's well, I, I started on my phone. Yeah. So it is cool on the phone because it's right in my, I have it at all times. Yeah. And, and you can pa pause your run and start it yeah, up later. Yeah. Um, so. yeah you can put uh, the Apple versions on Steam. I couldn't fit. Wait, the at Apple ver. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's deck verified. That's cool. Yeah. I have Apple Arcade, so I'm just going right, to play it yeah. on, on Apple Arcade. And I'm hoping that the cloud save works good, because it would be mm -hmm. cool to play it with a mouse. But uh, 
It's cool. You should try it. No, it's, I, it's, I have like a trial of Apple Arcade, so I'll just download it now. Fun to, to diddle around. Uh, so yeah, that's where the game industry is right now. I mean, last year we made a bunch of uh, uh, podcasts that were talking about, or we had read a bunch of stories that were talking about how people in the industry kept saying that this year was going to be a wash, that this yeah. year was going to be bad for the whole industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of games or game companies were holding back what they had uh, because they thought sales were going to be bad. Right. And they thought uh, they were going to have to fire everybody and that uh, there weren't going to be a lot of games. Right. And uh, that all of that is true, basically. Yeah. Uh, a lot of companies are firing everybody. Uh, I don't know if profits are down. <sighs> I think it, it varies from comp are, company to company. You are reporting, yeah. Profits are down. Uh, f I think Microsoft profits are up, but that's only because they just bought Activision. Um, Capcom's doing great. Nintendo's doing great. Sony is, I think, doing okay. Hmm. You know, it, it varies from company to company. Well, those are all Japanese. Yeah, they have a better handle. Actually, uh, I don't know if Konami's doing great. Silent Hill 2 uh, just came out, so I'm just curious to see like I don't what think, that does. I don't think Konami knows what they're doing yeah. anymore. I think they're, they fell off the handle. Well, Square Enix is doing badly because they don't know what they're doing. They've either. been doing bad for a while, yeah. and it doesn't seem like they should be doing bad. No. well, It always seems like they shouldn't be doing as bad as they say that well, they are. Well, I think because they always put unreasonable expectations on yeah. every single game. Yeah, they do. So I think that shoots them. In. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, this whole thing is interesting to yeah. see uh, what peop what types of games people are interested in. Uh, and I'm saying there needs to be like innovation in the industry, not just like, let's make a live service game. Yeah. But then one of the games that I have the most hours in is a clone of Counter-Strike that has magic. <laughs> but sometimes all you need yeah. is something innovative. <laughs> Take a game that already exists. And add magic. Add magic to it. That was really good. All right. That's that's all for that story, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, can I open stream right? Got to open. Uh, I have stream lives open. Brutal Beast, uh, with forty five months. Hey, Bob and Will, thoughts on Epic Mickey remastered? I saw that in Target today. I'm like, I'm not gonna buy that. I'm I've always wanted to play Epic Mickey. I've heard it's actually good. Never got. It. That was a Wii game. Yes. Why was that? It was like, did they not have a Mickey game for like a really long they time have, or something? It was like supposed to, it, it was a whole big thing. There was a lot around it when it was coming yes, out. Yes, because they got Warren Spector, the creator of like Deus Ex and like a okay. lot of like great games like to like run the project. It was going to be like a grand reintroduction of Mickey Mouse into the 21st century like try to make him like a like an actual character rather than just a logo on a t-shirt um it had a cool gameplay mechanic where you can like throw paint and it'll like add to the world or you can use paint thinner to take away from the world and destroy the world it was also kind of dark right yeah it was a little i don't know if dark's the right word but it was like a lot more serious than what like a, you would expect from a mickey mouse game were people comparing it to fantasia because the the wizard from Fantasia is in uh, okay. the game. Yeah, I yeah. think that's one of the big deals. That yeah. People... Well, the biggest deal was um, the antagonist of the game was Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Disney's first cartoon creation. Right. Here's a trivia for you. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was owned by Universal Studios. And the whole crux of this game was about Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. So in order to get the license, in order to get Oswald for this game, Disney gave Universal Studios sports commentator Al Michaels. <laughs> okay. Because he was working at ESPN, and they were like, okay, Al Michaels, NBC now owns you because we want a fucking bunny rabbit. <laughs> they gave, they <laughs> traded Oswald the Lucky Rabbit for a literal person. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And that then that's how Disney came to own Oswald the Lucky Rabbit again. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, Mike have a, ha, Harvat. Thank you for the nine months. Hooray for subs. Equivalent to a full human gestation. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, it takes nine months to make a baby. Oh, it does? Yeah. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> um, all right. Next, let's talk about the modern hardware thing. 
Yes. I put this article here. I'll read it. Okay. Sued Switch mod chip seller denies claims will seemingly take on Nintendo without a lawyer. Oh boy. Says, uh, Video Games Chronicle. That always goes well. <laughs> a Switch mod chip seller who was sued by Nintendo in July has denied the claims and will now seemingly take on the company without a lawyer. So I ordered from these guys because uh -huh. they were like one of the first suppliers or official suppliers of the MIG Switch. Yes. The website looked shady as all hell. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't uh, think it was going to go well, but I did it anyway because I want to make right. a video. And plus, it'd be an interesting story to say, I got scammed trying to buy the MIG Switch <laughs> from an official seller. Yeah. Uh, no communication to anybody. It took months to get the MIG Switch out. They got uh, a season desist from Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Then they kept selling them anyway right and then got a, a notification that they were gonna get actually sued mm. and then i got my big switch <laughs> so <laughs> uh nintendo filed a complaint against michigan-based ryan daly da daily daly? daily uh who operates a store called modded hardware the lawsuit claims that nintendo contacted daily in march and threatened to sue him unless he stopped selling Modded Switch consoles and MIG Switches, which enabled pirated Switch games to be played on unmodded hardware. Uh, where I'd like to add, a, I like to fact check. <laughs> it is very difficult to get a pirated game onto a MIG Switch. Right. Uh, you, unless you just, is it considered piracy if I take a game from you and upload it onto my MIG Switch? It's not legal. I don't know. It's illegal, but is it considered piracy? I guess so, because, like, you didn't pay for the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it's just hard to find raw dumps of games. Yeah. Uh, according to Nintendo's complaint, Daily agreed in March to stop selling the unauthorized devices, but continued to do so, claiming that he was looking for a new lawyer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nintendo, therefore, filed a complaint at federal court in Seattle, accusing Daily of... Six charges, including trafficking in circumvention devices and copyright infringement. That's a crazy thing to sue over. Uh, now, Daly, who has still yet to hire an attorney, has filed a response to Nintendo's complaint denying any wrongdoing. As reported by Torrent Freak, Daly kept his answers short to each of Nintendo's claims, either saying denied or claiming that he doesn't have enough information to admit or deny them and therefore denies them. <laughs> Daily also lists 17 affirmative defenses, uh, defenses in which the defendant introduces evidence which could excuse them from liability, including fair use, invalid copyrights, unjust enrichment, and fraudulent inducement. What's an inducement? Fraudulent inducement. That's the word. Yeah. Inducement. What does inducement mean? Uh, well, when I try to Google it, it's not it, a word. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. It's spelt differently. Did he spell it like that? The writer must have spelt it like that. No. I'm, I, oh, the quote. I wouldn't be surprised if Daily right worded it like that. Uh, inducement: a motive of co or consideration that leads one to action or to additional or more effective action. So on the torrent freak on the torrent freak link they have uh it's it's spelled inducement i n d u c. So they if torrent link spells it correctly. Okay. But that is daily spell. I think it's in his 17 affirmative defenses. Yeah. Cuz torrent freak has some things some like uh screenshots yeah if we can get a link to the oh here pdf all right well anyway uh now daily who has still yet to hire an attorney has followed but wait did i read that it's it the so the pdf of the lawsuit says induces but it's spelled with an i okay so, no it's just the article that's yeah. all the wrong. good job video glad we solved that <laughs> Also learned a new word. The case will now move on to the discovery process where both parties can start gaining evidence, though it appears that this will continue with Daly representing himself instead of hiring an attorney. That 
Not a good idea. Yeah. Nintendo's lawsuit claims that Daily not only sold mods to to customers, but also offered an, a mail-in service, which enabled players to send in their Switch consoles and have them returned modded, often with pirated games installed. Defendant not only offers the hardware and firmware to create and play pirated games, but he also provides his customers with copies of pirated Nintendo games, the platform holder's complaint says. Typically, this is a quote, when a customer purchases a hacked console or circumvention services, defendant reinstalls on the console a portfolio of ready-to-play pirated games, including some of Nintendo's most popular titles, such as Super Mario, The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid games. And that, my friends, is the kiss of death for modern yeah. hardware, is putting the games on there for sale. Yeah. Uh, had he not done that, I still think he would have gotten sued. Yeah. But um, they would have had uh, less to go on. Mm-hmm. That's like the big thing to get him on. Yeah. Uh, I'd imagine his lawyer's... Are tr- the lawyers that he had were all trying to like you know get him plea deals or yeah. like trying to like limit the sentencing or, mm-hmm. or not the sentencing but you know uh, it could be sentencing I yeah. mean th- that's happened before um, the the Bowser guy got sentenced yeah. to jail time um he's gonna owe a lot of money and these lawyers are probably trying to limit the amount that he's gonna owe but this guy's yeah. like I'm innocent I should <laughs> yeah. have to pay anything so he's trying to either find a lawyer that will fight tooth and nail for him or, or just do it himself or do it himself yeah um if he actually sold uh pirated games then i don't think he has a he's got on. nothing to stand on yeah there's some defense for uh you know uh selling uh circumvention devices there's at least yeah. some like navigating the legality of that but there is stuff in the digital millennium copyright act saying you can't sell circumvention devices yeah. <laughs> so uh there's some conflicting language there so you can navigate it a little bit uh, yeah. but th- it's the pirated game selling that will mm-hmm. be the end of that so uh good luck it sucks because yeah. uh if someone's willing to fight over a circumstance like this it could be good the yeah. president but uh the fact that they were selling pirated games is, yeah is that, not, i don't uh, think they, they have a way around that work. piracy is really fucking up a lot of things yeah for for, for the industry right now mm-hmm. uh jay cannon says he's not gonna win the problem is the sold and profited over the modification I'm no law wizard but i would think the courts would side more with an end user who mods things for their personal preservation or adding features to make it more compatible with other technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so the MIG switch, well, not the MIG switch. So there's the MIG switch. And then there's another one that is extremely similar to the MIG switch. I already forgot the name of it, but they open sourced it. Okay. So there is potential for one that is open source that you can just you know make yeah. yourself or or order from like pcp way or something yeah uh and that would be there's not much they can do about yeah. that if you go by if if someone's selling it and profiting off of it that's a, that's the yeah. problem um the mig switch is made in like russia so okay. like they're not gonna yeah do anything to the makers of the mig switch mm-hmm. but they had to distribute it through other people yeah and that's where the distributors could definitely get in trouble for yeah them. and and them being based in america is mm-hmm. gonna be a, is gonna be a problem yeah so uh profiting off of the circumvention devices is also yeah a no-no you can't profit off of emulation and you can't uh pirate games yeah those are the rules yeah. You can't profit in any way, and you can't uh, pirate. The, you can't steal the games. Yeah, those are the rules. Everybody, everybody agree on the rules. <laughs> Christ. Okay. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I have a button for. Nope. Bye. <laughs> nope. Backlog. 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 Backlog.
Hey guys, it's us, Backlog Time. That's right. This is the segment of the Wolf Den Podcast where we go through our video game collection. Every game we have ever bought, we put into a little Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one of those games at random, talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. How many games we got? 973. That is going to be number 497. 497. And that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Oh. For the PC. I thought this was... Okay, PC is the caveat. Usually when we pick one that's extremely popular, it's some weird version or something. All right, but like... (laughs) Granted, the PC version is just it's, it's the, just it's the, the PlayStation version. It's the Dreamcast version. Yeah. Yeah. So at that time, sometimes a game like this that is particularly a console game, yeah, the PC version would be be weird in some way. Yeah. But this was just legitimately the yeah so, same game that was ported to console. So we were N sixty four kids at the time, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one came to the Nintendo sixty four. But it didn't. But the second game didn't come to the Nintendo 64 in a timely fashion at all. So yeah. in order for us to play it, we had to get the PC version. And we were not PC gamers. Uh, PC gaming back then was a shit show. But miraculously, this game worked. And we had a controller that we could use for it. What year was this? 1999, I want to say. You know, we, you say we weren't PC gamers, but we played a lot of games on PC. We had PC games, yes, but like buying a game we, we, specifically for PC, yeah. installing it, making sure everything worked and stuff, that was very difficult we for us. We wanted the games on consoles. Yes. But we didn't have a console for this game. Like, what we, we played Tony Hawk 1, and we were like, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we saw Tony Hawk 2 would only work on our... We couldn't get it on yeah. the consoles that we had, except for the PC. So yeah. we just got it on PC. Yes, and honestly... Yeah. Played the hell out of it on PC. Yeah. Um, so the, this game came out in 2000 uh, for PlayStation and Windows PC and Game Boy Color and Dreamcast. Um, the Nintendo 64 version didn't come out until 2001. And by then, Tony Hawk 3 had just come mm-hmm. out. So like, there was no point in getting that game on you know, the N64 when we had gotten a GameCube and Tony Hawk 3 on that system. I remember having to control it with like the number pad or something. Like so, there's something really bizarre about it. So yeah, playing it on PC, like it defaults to mouse and keyboard. Yeah. So like you had to play like the tricks were with the the number pad and like you move with the arrow keys. We bought a controller. It was a Microsoft Sidewinder controller oh, that yeah. had all the buttons we needed, and we were able to play the game fairly well with that. Is that it? Uh, I don't remember that. Oh wait, this one. It was that one. Yeah, yeah, I that was that one, one we had. Yeah, yeah, bitchin. Uh, I think I played with the number keys. Yeah, you definitely did. But like again, then we got a, <laughs> then we got an actual controller. The video is gonna be choppy because yeah. I'm using Discord through a browser. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was the same game that was on uh, a, a console and. Yes. Uh, so much so we were able to play the 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 whole game and yes. and, and had the same exact experience that our friends had playing it yeah. on, on their on their PlayStation yeah. at the time. Uh f- I eventually did was able to get uh the PlayStation version of this game when like years later. But uh yeah. Uh one of the best games on the original PlayStation, one of the best games on the Dreamcast. Uh this a lot of people say this is the best one in the series. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh even though we played the pc version right. now it's all coming back to me i didn't yeah. even realize that that's the version that i played right. but now i'm remembering everything i unlocked spider-man using the yeah. number pad <laughs> um but it had the the best music mm-hmm. and you had the manual yes the manual, the manual changed everything was not in the first game no the manual is like the spin dash and sonic the hedgehog like the first game didn't have it but the second game it's, did. It's an so integral mechanic yeah. to the game that didn't exist in the first game and mm-hmm. made the first game worse. Yeah. If you're going back to try to play it. Yeah. Um, it's integral because that's a really easy way to chain moves together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, without that, it makes the game feel worse. Even though playing the first game with no context of having a manual yeah. uh, is great. Like yeah. we loved the first game, but then when they added the manual, you, mm-hmm. there was no going back. Same yeah. thing with the spin dash and Sonic. Yeah. Um, God, what else can you say about 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. The soundtrack, of course. One of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time. Rage Against the Machine. Melon Colin. Papa Roach. <laughs> Papa Roach. Papa Roach was in it. Um, yeah, I remember this game of the level design in particular. The first level um, tried, like, made you think it was going to be a, a warehouse knockoff. But then, like, it opened up more areas of the map. Like, if you do a certain trick, then, like, this part of the room opens. It was the hangar. The hangar, yeah. yeah. But if you do a trick over here, then, then you can go outside and do tricks out there. Right. Um, and, yeah, just the, the way, like, it opened up all of the levels more and more from what they were. The school. The school is probably the best level in the entire series. The school had the leap of faith in it. Yeah. It had the leap of faith. It was a recreation of famous skateboard spots around yeah. the world. Um, so like when you unlock the videos in the, cause like you can unlock the videos of each skater of, of them doing tricks in real life. And like, you can see like, Oh, that's where that's from. That's where that's from. They did an excellent job of like recreating like the real world's, um, areas for this game, uh, yeah. back on like the PlayStation one. Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite Tony Hawk game. This is the one I would say to play if anybody needs to play it. I mean, I mean to be honest, I, I would tell you to play the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one and two, the new it, one, the the, 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 the new, remake, yeah, the, the remake. remake. But, yeah, no, you know, you're if right. you're gonna go back to the original series, like this is definitely this is where you start. Honestly, I wouldn't start with the first one. I would start with this one, even though I think like three is a better game and Underground has more personality and like character to it. Like this is like just a good old fashioned like skateboarding game that like they they don't really make anymore i think the levels the level design mm -hmm. is is perfect i think the music choices are perfect yeah uh and i don't know if we need more to the mechanics that were brought in other games like underground i think had too much other bullshit underground had a lot of other bullshit but underground did also like add a lot more trick like traditional skateboarding tricks and made chaining the tricks easier to a yeah. certain extent okay um this game, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, had an iPhone port. Oh. And, I and had an N-Gage port, right? Did it have an N-Gage port? Like no, the was... first one had an N-Gage port. Oh, okay. This had an iPhone port. I had the iPhone port. It was the exact same game. Like, it was just Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Except the soundtrack was completely different. And you have no idea how much a soundtrack affects a game until you play the iPhone version of Tony Hawk's. This Pro does Skater look 2. just exactly the same. Yeah, and you know what? It's touch control, so it wasn't as good as like playing with a controller. But like, it was very good for what it was. But this, this be, fourteen years ago. Yeah, this video. But because the soundtrack was completely different, like it just it honestly made it unplayable. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, this one of the core elements of Tony Hawk is the soundtrack. Yeah. So uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the verdict is play the new version if you, right. if, if you want to. I mean, look, if you have your older versions, like play that too. Yeah. Uh, I would say the best version of Tony, uh, the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is probably the Dreamcast version. Uh, ran the best, had the high, highest graphical fidelity. Um, controlled just the same, you know. It had, like, the control had all the buttons for it, but. I bet you could probably find the PC version somewhere. You could probably find the PC PS version, probably the easiest way to play it. I don't know, because the PS2 ver the PlayStation 1 version is not expensive. Like you can find that anywhere. Yeah, like, no, but then you gotta price. plug in a PlayStation 1. Or a PlayStation 2 or a PlayStation 3. Okay. There you go. You have options. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I don't know if you'd be able to get the PC version right now. Yeah, I don't think so. You'd have to like find a oldgamesdownload.com. Yeah. That that is piracy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. You should come watch it on the podcast sometime. If you're on the podcast right now, you're one of these little chatters down here. Stay. Yep. Everyone else, goodbye. Bye. Okay. My phone is going nuts right now. I we think. Are? Yes. There is a uh, wedding going on. Oh, no. I should also know we had the Game Boy Color version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, but I didn't include that in the chat, in the, not in the chat, the conversation, because that's a very different game. Yes.
So if we pick, you know, if we do a backlog and we pick Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for the Game Boy Color, that's when we'll talk about it. Um, Rackus for the 14 months. I love you, Will. I love you too. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just fucking nothing, you guys. Snake Eater with 100 bits. Happy Prime Day, Wolves. Not a lot of great video game deals, but the best deal is Metal Gear Solid Master Collection is around $18. That's always on sale for like $19, $20. Worth it. I know. But like, I want it like on Steam Deck and, you know, that most they will sell the games individually for $15. Oh. Yeah. But they have the whole collection. They have right? the whole collection, okay. but like the, the discount never gets lower than like fifteen dollars per game. Okay. So um yeah, I mean the last Prime Day situation that happened, they're doing multiple a year now. Yeah. The last one had nothing. There was nothing good. I did buy a desk this you time. You did buy the I desk. I bought the desk. Oh, yeah, okay. I bought the desk. So I will hopefully. Is it have just a, a random desk or is it so I, I specifically, I wanted the Ikea desk, okay. but the Ikea desk is like $400 and you had to, you know, that's not a lot for a desk. I know, but like <laughs> to pay to ship it, then like, I didn't want to like deal with that. Amazon, like the Amazon one is significantly cheaper and like you can pay it off monthly, like with no interest. So I'm like, just do that. Just so we, we're looking at Three hundred and seventy dollars versus one hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, yeah, they kind of look exactly the same. If they're exact. The only difference is, you know, the Amazon one has um, a plug. Oh, but like you don't. I'm need that. probably never going to use that. I have a a mount for a desk plug. If you want? Okay. It's just sitting in my closet. Right. right. It's oh. like a thing you screw onto the side. Yeah, of the yeah. Desk. I've seen those. Yeah. Um. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. So. That was some. Like, you need a PC to put in, in the little PC. I'm going to put uh, my PS5 there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next news. What do we got here? Uh, Microsoft is asking developers, hey, why don't you develop for us? Why Why you not make it a game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Microsoft uh, wants to hear from game developers who might be skipping Xbox or those already building games using the company's developer tools. The software maker is expanding its Xbox research team to include the community of game developers seeking feedback directly from developers about tools, support, and the overall pain points of the Xbox platform. A new program, much like Microsoft's Xbox Insider, um, is now open to all members of game studios, not just technical employees. Typically, it takes a lot of people to make and ship a game, including marketing, user research, artists, audio, PMs, community managers, and more, says uh, Deborah Henderson, PhD, principal user researcher for Xbox. Uh, we want to hear from everyone who works on games or helps support uh, game studios because if we can make it, if we can make your life easier, it makes gaming better. While the program will gather feedback about tools, performance, tuning, debugging uh, utilities, and plenty of other aspects of game development, it is also designed for input from game studios that aren't shipping games on Xbox. If you're not on Xbox, we'd love to know why, says Henderson. And honestly, if you're using our competitors' products, you probably have a great perspective we could learn from. Microsoft outreach for uh, direct game developer feedback comes amid a some notable delays for third-party releases on Xbox. Baldur's Gate 3 launched on Xbox several months after it first debuted on PS5 because of technical issues developing for the Xbox Series S. Capcom revealed last month that two of its fighting game collections will be coming to Xbox in 2025 after technical discussions with Microsoft. Black Myth Wukong is coming to Xbox after its PS5 release as its developers are currently optimizing for Series X and S uh, to meet their quality standards. Um, the developers of... A Anotria, the last song, also publicly announced an indefinite delay to Xbox version of the game last month after struggling with Microsoft's game review process. The studio's statement uh, about the issues caught the attention of Xbox chief Phil Spencer, who reached out to the team to help resolve the situation. Microsoft would obviously prefer to receive these types of feedbacks from game developers privately to avoid potential headlines about game developers skipping the platform due to technical issues, tooling, or even process. Hopefully, this expansion of the Xbox research will help address the pain points that prevent uh, some game developers from releasing games on Xbox. It's interesting that they're involving uh, not just developers in this uh, questionnaire. They're yeah. involving uh, publishers and 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 uh, PR people. 
because it might not even get to the point where they put the game into development for Xbox. Yeah. It, it, it could be PR people just be like, nobody's interested in Xbox. Yeah. But everybody knows it's most likely that developers are having a hard time dealing with the Series S limitation. I think it's the Series S, but also too, I do think it's a, it's a sales standpoint because so few people have yeah. Xboxes compared to uh, the PlayStation 5 or even the PC. Like for a lot of games, it's not financially viable to release the game on Xbox. Yeah, you're... you're you're dwindling down uh the amount of people that are gonna mm -hmm. play the game on the platform and you're increasing the amount of work you have to do by yeah. putting it on such limited hardware yeah um that being said for a long time we often on this show said it couldn't be that hard to, to put your shit over to the series s if games are coming out for the switch yeah uh also a lot of these games run on really shitty computer hardware, mm -hmm. so they should be just fine on the Series S. Also, they developed the Series S in a way where it should be easy to develop for if you're already developing for, for the Series X. Yeah. But it's been out for a long time now, and games are coming out that aren't working on shitty computers anymore. Uh, so I could totally see why developers would not want to uh, do that. And, and, yeah. and Microsoft started this generation saying that everything that works on the Series X will work on the Series S, just right. at a lower resolution. Uh, and that is, that kind of shot them in the foot. Yeah, because there's a lot of like, you know, part of the deal was there has to be feature parity between the two. Like yeah. the Xbox, the X can't have more than the S. Yeah. But one of the big things with Baldur's Gate 3 was they couldn't get split screen co-op working on the S. And because of that, they could potentially not release on Xbox altogether. But Microsoft stepped in and helped them figure it out. Yeah, so that ended up becoming a huge problem for them. But mm -hmm. also, and more than that, it's probably just that not a lot of people have Xboxes compared to other consoles. Yeah. Uh, because now you have to develop for this console that nobody has, and it's harder to develop for it than it would be on, a, yeah. on something like a PlayStation 5 mm -hmm. because you have to take into account the shitty hardware. So, uh, yeah. I also think there's also like a small piece of me that's like some of these developers are using the better hardware as a little bit of a crutch. They're not right. optimizing the game as best as they can because they have the, all the power that can, you know, suck up the, yeah. the poor optimization that they have. Uh, but that's not every game. Right. A lot of more and more games now this past year have been coming out that uh, uh, aren't running on low powered PCs or gaming handhelds or PC handhelds mm -hmm. and stuff then it's becoming harder for for that type of hardware to to work with these modern games. Yeah. So we don't have any results from this research study and I don't know if we ever will, but uh it's interesting that they're looking into it. I mean, they're probably thinking of what their next console is going to look like. Yeah. I I know people are like wondering like what's Microsoft going to do to respond to the PS5 Pro. I mean, I honestly don't think they have a response i don't think it makes sense for them to you know they're all they're trailing they're in last place by a wide margin i don't think it makes sense for them to now be like uh xbox series x pro no. you know focus on games right now yeah. focus on games uh and then have a big splash with the next generation yeah um and there's also potential for them to not even have a next generation at all yeah and just be a games publisher and a, yeah. and, and that's focus what i think on PC that's stuff. honestly what i think is gonna happen yeah Go full streaming, maybe. Yeah. Snake Eater with uh, 24 months. William, That's me. listen here. All platforms give you the option to buy the Metal Gear Solid games individually, but you can buy the Master Collection altogether. Just got to scroll down until you find it on Steam for some reason. Also, happy two years. So, yes, I am aware that... So, so the way it works is when you buy it digitally, the you buy the game, like, the games come individually. So, like... Even if you buy the, the bundle, it's um, Metal Gear Solid is its own thing. Metal Gear Solid 2 is its own thing. Metal Gear Solid 3 is its own thing. The physical version of the game, though, that's what you often see for $20. So, like, when you install the desk, it, the games will pop up individually. We just got to use the desk for, like, DRM. But, like, I want the games digitally, and I want them specifically on my Steam deck. Yeah. And when you buy the games on Steam Deck, they don't discount it to $20 for the whole collection. 
At most, it's $47 for the whole collection. You know? Compared to what, 50? How much how much is it the discount? I think it's like 60 full price. So that's what I'm saying. Like if I can get the game for twenty dollars versus like forty seven. The whole I, collection. Yeah. I would rather get it for twenty, but I want it for a very specific platform. Oh yeah, it is it, the whole collection is eighteen dollars. For for Yeah. For what platform? That was on Amazon. Yeah. So you can't even do that because you, you, you want it on PC. Yeah. You get like a Steam code or something? I I understand yeah. your dilemma. Uh got a bunch of ROMs for you if you want to, <laughs> for, for all those games. That's all right. Um all right, next we got a hostile takeover. I remember just a few years ago we were talking about this hostile takeover. Is it not hostile anymore? No, it's not hostile anymore. Okay. Uh Tencent cool and the Guillermo family considering a buyout of Ubisoft. They're friends now. Yeah. Uh Ubisoft has had a rough year or more, losing almost half of its share value in 2024 due to the underwhelming performance of Star Wars Outlaws and the delay of Assassin's Creed Shadows, among other issues. Now Tencent and Ubisoft's founders, the Guillemos, are considering buying out the publisher, reports say. A report by Bloomberg cited people familiar with the matter saying Tencent and Guillermo Brothers Limited um, are considering their options. Both parties are currently minority shareholders of Ubisoft, with Tencent contributing around 9% of shares and the Guillermo's owning about 20.5%. Uh, 20 other minority shareholders have been speaking out against the Guillermo's leadership of the company in recent months, uh, pushing for the board to take Ubisoft private or allowing it to sell uh, to a strategic investor. Shareholders' frustrations had been growing for some time, but the peak uh, following the softer-than-expected performance of Star Wars Outlaws, Ubisoft took an unusual decision in its wake uh, to delay Assassin's Creed Shadows, their tentpole release for Q2020, uh, Q4, despite the game being ready to ship, in favor of adding new features and story quests designed to bolster its uh, reception when it launches in February. Ubisoft shares rose around 33% in the wake of the Bloomberg article reporting uh, the buyout being considered. There has been reoccurring chatter about someone buying Ubisoft for years, whether private equity sniffing around in 2020, uh, which is when Tencent got involved, or long-running efforts by Vivendi to take over the company in the 2010s. Um, the Gimo, uh has previously maintained they'd consider selling if someone offered. Maybe now we'll see if the shareholders would consider selling to them. I think that yeah, they don't the G, the gear gear your the G's don't know uh, what they're doing anymore. No. And they uh, it's it, it, they're getting older and they don't want to bother. So, yeah, I uh, think like I think the business has evolved beyond them. You know. Yeah, I mean, but like to us, it seems obvious, mm -hmm. like how to like not re release the same shitty game over and over. Again. Yeah. Um, but to them, I don't know. I, I, I guess something must be going on like logistically. Like why do they keep copy and pasting the same game over and over yeah. again? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is it just, do they just not have the money to put into the development of these yeah. games to make them unique? Do they not want to take the risks it, it would take to make something unique? Um, I have a lot of questions, but I guess the, the simple answer is probably just that, uh, they're ready to throwing the towel and yeah i think so just a few years ago there was talk of tencent trying to get them yeah uh, and and they were buying up uh all of the shares or yeah. all the seats on the board or something i think but the article to me makes it and they sound put like a huge, they put a big stop to it you uh, ubisoft said hey we don't want this takeover we're putting a stop to it so the way this article is worded to me is that um you know there are people looking to like what to do with ubisoft the board says take the company private this article makes it sound like that Tencent and the Guillermo family, who are, are already shareholders of Ubisoft, are going to team up to take over the company altogether. And that to and me- And make it private or no? Uh, yeah. It would be making it private. Yeah, but for Tencent and the Guillermo family. Okay. And the Guillermo family are the ones who've been screwing up the company the last 38 years. Okay. So- Yeah, why? I don't know the logistics of making a company private because I'd imagine there's a lot of money to be had with just shares of the company floating around. I know that you now have uh, investors who right. you need to answer to, and mm -hmm. that's probably fucking up a lot. Yeah. 
But when you take it private, what happens to all those people? I mean, all the money just goes to like whoever owns the company. You know, and I'd imagine that Tencent would have to buy out all of their shares. Tencent would have to buy out. Yeah, they would. You know, whoever is like buying all the shares would pay. You know, the shareholders like their, their and that's end. I guess their investment. And yeah, then they would go private, and any revenue yeah. would just go right to them. Right. Okay. I had to think that out out loud. Right. Right. But now it seems know. obvious. <laughs> Well, it's like when, you know, Twitter was a, was a publicly traded company and then, you know, the, the dummy came in with $44 billion that he had to borrow from a lot of people who want their money back, but they're not getting their money back. Spoiler alert. And when he bought Twitter, he like, he took the company private. So like he paid off all the shareholders and now he owns it and he made it a, a platform for unbiased, um, equal opportunity, political discourse, uh, by setting up a conservative super PAC for Donald Trump. <laughs> also, you it's a it's a it's a bastion for free speech that you have to pay for to get your yeah. tweets shown to anybody on any mm -hmm. of the replies all the, the ones only that time pay all I ever got top. a warning that the tweet I was putting out was offensive was when I said that the logo, the new X logo looked like a douchebag uh thing you would write on your notebook in college. So making fun of him gets you a warning saying like, hey, you're being offensive. Just heads up there. I've got Everybody tweet that Elon Musk has a tiny dick <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, well, how did that happen? How did we get there? We were talking about like taking a company private. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Tencent will be buying all of the shares, which is literally yeah. what they tried to do years ago. Yes. Where it were stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they're like, we're sorry, do it anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Tencent's already like the largest video game company in the world, you know. So yeah, this like, would make them huge. This would make them, yeah. I don't like the fact that Tencent is taking over the whole games industry. Yeah. However, I think that something needs to happen with Ubisoft. Yeah. Maybe Elon Musk should buy it. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, he's great at running companies. We need to stop all of these woke games. Yes. So many woke games. You know what? That's why Star Wars Outlaws didn't do so well. Woke Cause, game because the lead character was ugly. Yeah, if she was hot. If she was hot, but then no, the, the, that's my game. You know, the everyone buy Stellar Blade. The, the DEI police won't let you have a hot woman in the game anymore. She is ugly, and it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not because the character is ugly. The game is ugly. The game does a bad job of showing faces. Right. It's not that she was designed ugly. The world that she's in and the way that her face looks right. in the game is is bad. Yeah. So it's Un a woke game yes. because it's because <laughs> they they fucked up modeling the character. Right. <laughs> also, it doesn't help on playing it on like a PC handheld at like twenty five frames yeah. a second. So all of everything looks messed up. Also, the little guy that you have, I think it's like Nix or something. Yeah. He's fine in the game, right? Also ugly. <laughs> they could have done a better job. Why do they got to make him slimy? Right. Put some fur on him, you know? I thought he had fur on him. He's slimy. One of the articles we just read, oh, the one we just read, he was the top. He's furry. You know, he's a little furry. Yeah, he's furry. They put a little fur. You know what it is? I'm running on a PC handle <laughs> that can't render fur. That's what it is. No, what it is. Is a woke it's game. Woke, it's right. a woke, yeah. It's... Right. Right. I don't know how that makes it woke, but we'll. we'll get I'm it. sure somebody the, the will joke, tell us. The joke will write itself. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of woke games, Halo Infinite. We got a Halo a Infinite third news in mode. <laughs> Developer 343 Industries confirmed a new way to play at uh, this weekend's 2024 Halo Championships. Uh, Spartans who uh, Spartans won't be able to slide from first person to third person uh, on the fly, but will instead get a new dedicated firefight mode in which all players have a third person perspective. It marks the very first time a third person uh, point of view has ever been formally available in a Halo game in the franchise's storied history. Uh, it is a fun way to play. You have more awareness. Senior community manager uh, John uh, Unishek uh, Juzinsek nailed it said um courtesy of vg charts uh you get to see your spartan it's super cool internally people uh, have been loving it and i am excited for everyone to get their hands on it later this year 
Uh, force creators too can make uh, use of the third person POV uh, in their own creations. 343 stops short of revealing a precise release date for this new mode, but we'll keep you posted. So some other people on Twitter I saw pointed out that this kind of looks a lot like Fortnite and it ends. Yeah. They're like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a Halo skin in Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, and I, when I saw some screenshots on Twitter, it did look like that. Yeah. Now I'm looking at it, it looks a lot like Destiny. Destiny isn't inherently third person, but there yeah. are some weapons and some uh, moves that you can do that turn it into a third person game right. on the fly. And Destiny was made by Bungie, so it makes a lot of sense that it would be similar. Right. Uh, Call of Duty recently had... They introduced third person. Yeah. But it is in certain modes mm -hmm. uh, because it would break the multiplayer game to have a different perspective like that. You can like potentially peek around corners and stuff. So it yeah. would have to be in a different mode uh, for competitive reasons. I know that, you know, back when they were Bungie was initially developing Halo 1, it started off as an RTS. But the legend has it they had more fun controlling the characters manually than they did like the overworld view. Mm -hmm. So they switched it to a third person shooter. Oh, so before I didn't be know that. Yeah. So before it became a first person shooter, it was a third person shooter. And I I forgot why they made it like first person. I think because it was like more accurate to aim at the time. Um so yeah, so like that third person shooting like has like roots in Halo. It just we hadn't seen it in an official release like this. I think it's fine. I'm yeah. glad they keep doing stuff to Halo to make it yeah. interesting because that game uh needed a lot of work well they're not done yet because okay. that was just the tip of the iceberg future halo games are moving to unreal engine 5 ah. as 343 industries rebrands with multiple projects in development the future of halo is starting to come into focus uh during sunday's halo world championships 343 industries made a number of announcements including that it will officially be changing its name to halo studios and that it is working on multiple new games in addition the newly rebranded studio says that all future projects will be developed on unreal engine leaving behind the slip space engine utilized by halo infinite the announcements uh were unveiled in a seven minute video shown ahead of the halo world championships grand finals uh, which showcased the results of the Project Foundry, an experimental project designed to show a Halo game built using the Unreal Engine. While it's not much more than a tech demo, it offers a glimpse at a fresh beginning for Xbox's flagship franchise in the wake of 2021's Halo Infinite. It's a huge shift for the series, not the least because of the resources poured into the Slip Space engine over the course of development. The studio, formerly known as 343 Industries, notoriously struggled with the Slip Space engine during Halo Infinite's uh, development, in part because of its uh, used tools dating back to the early 2000s. Still, it was expected to serve as the foundation for the future of ha uh, for the sorry, it was expected to serve as the foundation for the series after Halo Infinite. Respectfully, some components of Slip Space uh, are almost 25 years old, art director Chris Matthews said in an interview with Xbox Wire. Uh, although 343 are developing it continuously, uh, there are aspects of Unreal that Epic has made uh, has been developing for some time, which are unavailable to us in Slip Space, and we uh, have taken huge amounts of time and resources to try and replicate. An early 2023 report suggests that Halo's developers are ready to hit the reset button on the series after heavy shakeups within the studio, including transitioning to Unreal. Uh, the report also said that Halo's developers were focusing on pitching new Halo games while prototyping ideas. Project Foundry appears to be the culmination of that effort. Interesting. That yes. The engine was made by 343. Yes. So, uh, this hopefully will help uh, make the focus on designing a great game yeah. instead of uh, having to putz around with an engine. Like yeah. making the, the engine... And making the whole game run great on this engine that nobody uses. I think oh, another big thing too was like a lot of Microsoft Studios are already using Unreal Engine 5. Mm -hmm. And one of the lessons they learned from Redfall was that it was hard to get people to help them. You know, when they were, ha when Arcane was struggling while making Redfall, it was hard for Microsoft didn't really have a way to like have other studios go and help them with the project. What was Redfall using? I think it was using a proprietary oh, okay. engine. But the point is, now that they're all using Unreal, because, like, the Coalition, who makes Gears, uses Unreal. Um, I forgot who's making uh, Perfect Dark, but they're using Unreal. So they can all, like, if, you know, Halo Studios needs help, they can go to Coalition. The Coalition can send people yeah. to work on them, because they all have experience with the same, the same engine. 
Um, this does not affect Bethesda, though, because they all use id tech. <laughs> okay. So it makes a lot of sense for a developer to use an engine that is widely used because yeah. uh, if you run into a problem, chances are somebody's already done that. Instead of having to develop the whole thing from the ground yeah. up, you already have like a lot of tools that can that can help you out. Uh, Redfall was using Unreal Four, so they. Sh oh. I guess there was no one using Unreal Four in my. Well, no, because the the coalition was using Unreal for Gears, but back then, like they didn't have a good pipeline for getting people to help them with. I think they just newly purchased. Yeah, the company that, that was another and, thing too, and yeah. they didn't really pay much attention to. Them. Yeah. I think that's what it really was. Um, yeah, ha putting a lot of effort into building an engine from the ground up. Uh, it sucks. It's it hard. Sucks. It takes a lot of time, yeah. It makes sense when you have to do something really specific in an engine. Like, I don't know, like a like a portal gun. Like, yeah. you gotta do shit like that. Like, that. Something like that would be... You'd have to... I, you could do that in Unreal now, but yeah. like, you know, like... If you have something like super unique for an engine, uh, like the rifts in, yeah. in in a rift apart, Ratchet and Clank, like that was supposed to be like like really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, so if you have something specific like that, I'd understand making a whole engine, but mm -hmm. not Halo. You can totally do a game like Halo in a engine that everybody uses, like a yeah. whole engine. Yeah, absolutely. We don't have a whole story for this, but uh, Valorant runs on Unreal Engine 4, and they right. just announced that they are moving to Unreal Engine 5. Okay. Uh, and they're moving the game that is currently out to Unreal Engine yeah. 5. Uh, I'd imagine that's not going to change like anything at all. I, I think it would just probably be easier for them to do. I don't I mean, I'm sure nowadays it's easier going from 4 to 5, but I know back yeah. in the day, like going from like, you know, 3 to 4 was like a nightmare for a lot of people yeah i'd imagine five was developed in such a way where yeah. they could just move things over and thing i mean i'm sure there's a lot of big updates but yeah. uh since previous unreal engines i'm sure this is like a small upgrade compared yeah. to the other ones um so uh i'm hoping the next halo is good because i didn't like infinite yeah well i think by like rebranding the studio completely i mean three that's four, another three, thing that's yeah. really bizarre because 343 is uh that's a halo reference yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now they're just calling it halo studio well i think everybody called it halo studios anyway i but i think I, like i read an article that said they were rebranding to 343 studios they were they're rebranding to halo studios because the, the official I, I company is now. 343 industries right i yeah. read something that said 343 studios and i was like oh that's not a big change yeah but halo studios is a huge change i because i know like they had layoffs of their original like team lead left uh so they're like they had to have like a big restructuring down there and like you know halo still is the crown jewel of the xbox game library so like they need that series to function properly yeah you know whatever that may be so i think yeah switching to unreal rebranding the studio if necessary whatever halo 7 is like it needs to hit and i think they're they're doing all they can to make sure it hits yeah, Microsoft is kind of struggling to find their footing yeah. with all of the uh, studios that they have right now. Mm -hmm. But I think that they'll figure it out. Yeah. They got a lot of good IPs that they can leverage. Um, Sequel to Alien Isolation yeah. has been announced. Uh, you the, liked this game a lot. Oh, I never, yeah, I, I never did. Played it. Um, Sega has revealed it is working on Alien Isolation sequel. The announcement was made on Monday to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the original game. Uh, the sequel is in early development at Creative Assembly, according to studio creative director Al Hope, uh, who also directed the first game. On the 10th anniversary, it seems only fitting to let you know that we have heard your distress calls loud and clear. Uh, today, I'm delighted to confirm on behalf of the team that a sequel to Alien Isolation is in early development. We look forward to sharing more details with you uh, when we're ready. Originally released on PC and consoles before making the way to mobile in 2021. Really? There is an iPhone version of this game. I looked it up. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh the first person survival horror game was inspired by 1979's Alien movie and drew praise for its tense gameplay and immersive world. Play, uh, players take on the role of Wayland Utani employee Amanda Ripley, daughter of Alien movie protagonist Ellen. Set 15 years after Ridley Scott's original film, Amanda's mission is to uncover the truth about her mother's disappearance, uh, which leads her to decommissioning a trade station uh, on the fringes of space where she is forced in, uh, into a game of cat and mouse with a xenomorph. It's been nothing short of incredible to witness your passion for the game over the years and see it reach so many players around the world. 
uh, Hope said in today's message to the fans. Does uh, she canonically have a child in the movie? Yes. Uh, yeah. Canonically, um, between Alien and Aliens is 57 years. So she, uh, Ellen Ripley, misses her daughter's entire life. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So very sad. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, this game was a huge deal when it came out. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 I remember there wasn't like any anticipation well, around it at all. I think content And then it came important. out and everybody was like, Because what Whoa. happened was this game came out like within a few years of Aliens Colonial Marines. Which, which had a lot of anticipation. Which had a lot of anticipation, <laughs> which, which was a complete disaster yeah. of a game. So like people i think sega was like all right we got another alien coming out it was just like just kind of sweeping on the rug and stuff and then like it came out and like people were like discovering like oh man this is actually really good they put effort into it they put time into it they actually made it a functioning game that was like really good and really scary and it came out around like right after there were a lot of indie uh horror games that yeah. were in a similar vein but right. this was like that but with a budget exactly so and like you could see like every yeah. dollar is on display for- and that's a unique style of game having yeah. a thing that you cannot kill yeah. that is chasing you the whole game yeah <laughs> is a unique style yeah. for a game so, uh, yes, I, I never finished Alien Isolation. That's like it's the, long. It's, it's like 18 very hours. long, yeah. But that's like the one game I regret not finishing. 18 hours is like normal for a single player game, but for a game where you are being chased by yeah. a thing the whole time, that's like kind <laughs> like, of a long time. It's, it's a genuinely scary, <laughs> intense yeah. game. Like, it's a lot to handle, you know? Yeah, this so. is, yeah, th- you have to be... It takes a lot out of you playing a yeah. game like that, so... So, but... Uh, hopefully the next game is shorter. Um, uh, that is going to be a big stream game. Everybody's going to play. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember Colonial Marine, Aliens Colonial Marine, because yeah. when I first started working at GameStop, that was the game that everybody would pre-order just to have money in the system because it was so. F- it was the farthest pre-order yeah. that that you could do. So we. I don't know. People are like, oh, I don't want that game pre-ordered anymore. Move it to something. Yeah. We always move it to Alien Colonial Marines or whatever. Reason. Well, that game and then ha- that game took fucking years. And then I think it came out after I left GameStop. Came out in 2013. Yep. So that- I started working at GameStop, and it was available for pre-order. And it came out after I had already left. It, ha- it was in development for six years. That's it. Yeah, well, back then that was a very long time. I think they had a release date that moved like a long yeah well let's move on to horizon zero dawn yes version hold to make way for remaster oh i heard about this sony's controversial strategy to uh, require a playstation network account for its pc games is now affecting horizon zero dawn on friday the playstation maker delisted the original game uh on steam and the epic game store to make way for its forthcoming replacement the horizon zero dawn remaster so um the horizon zero dawn complete edition was previously available in countries where steam was accessible the steam page for the complete edition remains live but the game itself is no longer available for purchase steam customers are instead presented with the option to pre-order horizon zero dawn remastered or to buy the sequel horizon forbidden west the decision to pull the previously released pc version of horizon zero dawn will make it more difficult for customers in some countries to play the game as the remastered release out on October 31st will require a PlayStation account. Uh, Sony's PlayStation Network is not officially available in more than 100 countries, primarily the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and Southeast Asia. Uh, Sony requires a PSN account for many of its newer PC titles, including single-player titles like Until Dawn and God of War Ragnarok, a decision that has uh, elicited ire from customers. PC customers revolted back in May when Sony required uh, players of Helldivers 2 to link to a PlayStation Network account uh, for the PC version of the game. Uh, That post-launch requirement sparked intense backlash as players uh, review-bombed the game on Steam, flooding the game store page uh, with hundreds of thousands of negative reviews. Sony ultimately reversed its unpopular decision and developer Hour Ahead Game Studio turned Helldivers 2 negative review into... uh, negative review chart on steam into an in-game cape but the popular co-op shooter is still unavailable for purchase in countries where the playstation network is not a supported for now horizon zero dawn complete edition on pc 
is available to purchase from GOG.com, which boasts that no activation or online connection is required to play. Polygon reached out to Sony Interactive Entertainment for comment on Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition's delisting and whether it will remain for sale on GOG and will update when the company responds. While delisting games uh, to make way for re-releases is common practice, other publishers have taken more consumer-friendly approaches to handling the rollout of remakes and remasters. So, I'm trying to see it from the perspective of like, uh, uh, of like a PR perspective, like, there's messaging here. Like people are going to go to steam in anticipation for the new version of the game. Yeah. And they might buy the old version by accident. Right. So other companies, the way that they get around this is they have an upgrade. Right. And they change the price of the original game Mm -hmm. and then have an upgrade that ends up equaling out to the price of the full game. Right. You know, like, um, make the, old version $50 and then have the upgrade be $20. Well, that's what they did. Last week we reported on they raised the price of Horizon Zero Dawn on PlayStation from $20 to $40. Right. And then, you know, the $10 upgrade. That's where I got the idea. Yeah. I didn't realize <laughs> I didn't realize that's literally where I got the idea, but this is on Steam. Yeah. So, maybe they found it too hard to have an upgrade on Steam or a DLC situation. If so. you go to well, because I have it on Steam. And if yeah. I go to the Steam page now, bottom, uh, like in the bottom of it, it says uh, add on remastered version, $10 pre order now. On Steam. On Steam. Oh, so you can just do that. Yeah. Okay. So they fucked up. Yeah. There's no reason why they couldn't have done the same thing that they did on, 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 uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah. I guess maybe because, well, no, because they did it already. Because, C- like, they have the account system now. Yeah. Because the other big issue that was talked about in the article is that uh, they used to not have you required to log in on your PlayStation account. But now that they do, it won't work in certain countries. Yeah. But they could just say that on the DLC page yeah. or, or the add-on page. Like, yeah. oh, you if you get this add-on, you suddenly will not be able to play your game in Brazil yeah. or whatever. Which, again, sucks because it's a single-player game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is annoying. Does the PlayStation Network account, though... That allows you to like. Can that do cross save? Like, if I save on PC, then I can play it on PlayStation. Or I doubt it. Okay, I doubt that. Thought that. it did that, but I might be wrong. I don't. I'm not 100 yeah. percent certain. But that would be awesome. Chat. That would be crazy, but I doubt that that would yeah. work like that. I can't even fucking play my Bellatro on my MacBook and my <laughs> and my yeah. iPhone. It just stinks. It's just such a dumb oversight. Yeah. That sounds like something that really needed to have been thought out. Like mm-hmm. the second you decided you wanted to put this game on PC. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Red Dead Redemption One's coming to PC as well. Yeah, Ralph, uh, sorry, you rascals, you did it again. Uh, the original Red Dead Redemption uh, hit the Nintendo Switch and, P- and PS4 last year and a move that was called baffling for its apparent decision to skip PC a little over a year on. And well, guess what? Red Dead Redemption 1 is coming to PC alongside uh, its spectacular Undead Nightmare expansion. It hits on October 29th, just in time for Halloween. No multiplayer, though. Sorry, social people. Damn, multiplayer was good. It was. Um, it's It's got a bunch of bells and whistles to make up for the wait, too. Per Rockstar's announced that the PC version of Red Dead Redemption is coming with all sorts of enhancements to make John Marston more excruciatingly detailed than ever. That means a native 4K resolution with up to 144 hertz on compatible hardware, uh, monitor support for both ultra-wide and super-ultra-wide, uh, te- HDR10 support, uh, full keyboard and mouse functionality. There's also DLSS 3.7 and FSR 3.0 support, just like they had in the old West. So uh, this guy's a kooky writer, this PC gamer. Yeah, I thought you were adding no, no, I was not. Uh, it is coming to Steam, the Epic Game Store, uh, directly from Rockstar. Uh, no word yet if it's gonna be Steam Deck compatible. Uh oh, it's Rockstar. Rockstar's games work on. Oh, they add. Oh, it doesn't have anti cheat, so it should be fine. Okay, because uh, Grand Theft Auto Five was. Uh, until they added the anti cheat. Right, and uh, it, so this should be fine. Yeah, because it doesn't have multiplayer. Okay, if they add multiplayer, it might fuck up the whole thing. Right. Uh, second question though, mm-hmm. is because when the game did launch on, uh, Switch and PS4. 
uh, the price was a factor. It was fifty dollars, which was a lot for what this game was. Yeah. So that leads me to believe that the Switch, the Steam version, is also going to be like unnecessarily expensive. Uh, hopefully it'll have all the bells and whistles that, uh, oh, I just said it had a bunch of bells and whistles. Yeah. Uh, the Xbox version had a lot of upgrades for Xbox series. Yeah. So, uh, it's probably going to be, it's probably going to run really great. Yeah. Uh, especially even on like PC handhelds. And yeah. Stuff. No, I'm very excited for this. It, it's, it's still the best Red Dead Redemption game. It is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I would a thousand percent play this game again. And if I could play it on the toilet. Even better. So it said that it has FSR 3.0. Yes. Uh, I saw a tweet from uh, Carrie that said, I'm glad it's on PC. I wish it had FSR 3.1 instead. I'll wait until it's $15, he said. <laughs> uh, What's I don't the, know what the fucking difference is. Yeah, I, have I don't no know. What, idea. I, don't even, I don't have no idea what FSR is. I Googled it and I saw it. Oh, uh, AMD Super Resolution. Oh, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think I usually use that because the handhelds yeah. that I have uh usually are so low powered that that won't really help that much. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I enabled it on the One X player because that had the AI upscaling stuff. On yeah, it. but uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll run just fine at all of the devices that we need. It's a fucking Xbox 360 game. Yeah. Um, if you haven't played it, play it. It yeah. is uh, one of the best Rockstar games. One of the best games that Rockstar has ever made. Yes. Uh, uh, last news? Little yes. Big Planet 3. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, not Little Big Planet yeah, 3. Little Big Planet 3 has been around for a long time. The beloved game was released in November of 2014 on both PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. But after just about a decade, gamers won't be able to purchase it and it's DLC after October 31st because Sony is delisting it. To be clear, the game and DLC won't be available for purchase anymore after the end of the month, but you can still uh, keep your copies and enjoy them. Sadly, ever since the PS4 servers were shut down back in April of this year, fan-created levels uh, that weren't already saved locally aren't available to download and play anymore. At this point, you're limited to the base game, something uh, worth playing, but much of the game's charm came from this user generated content. Sony didn't say why I see listing Little Big Planet 3, but it's possible that the game's uh, music licenses are expiring after 10 years. Uh, no matter the reason, it's uh, best to grab a copy of the game if you want to enjoy your adventures with Sackboy. Is this the one that I played? We have we had one and two. I don't think we had three. Oh, okay. I only played one then. I know that um yeah, the servers had to get shut down due to like a technical issue that they were never able to fix. I think there was a uh, an exploit. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. It, it's probably shutting down because you know the game is useless without like being able to share levels. Yeah, so, it's like Mario Maker. Yeah, so there's no reason for it to be to exist anymore. But there was a single player component. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like they are underutilizing Sackboy. A thousand percent. Look at the. This is the list of Little Big Planet games. Uh, and look at that huge gap between Little Big Planet Three and Sackboy: A Big Adventure. Yeah, like honestly, Sackboy, like Astrobot has Sackboy spotlight right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Little Big Planet was uh, PlayStation's a Mario Maker. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was before Mario Maker. I think it was. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, they 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 made dreams. Yeah. And I guess that scratched the itch for them, but this is completely different. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of room for a new Sackboy thing. It says 2023 Ultimate Sackboy. The hell is that? What is that? Uh, is a free to play endless running game. Oh, uh, okay. Is it a phone game? It doesn't even have a Wikipedia listing. <laughs> uh. Yeah, in 2021, Little Big Planet servers suffered a DDoS attack, and users reported that the hackers were posting transphobic messages uh, in its online mode. As a result, all of the online servers were temporarily shut down in May of 2021. On your birthday in 2021, the PS4 servers uh, were restored, but the PS3 servers were shut down. Um, on January 8th, 2024, the PS4 servers were temporarily shut down due to malicious game mod that caused users to falsely be banned from the PlayStation Network 
on April 19th of this year, servers were permanently shut down due to ongoing technical issues. The loss of access to at least 10 million online community levels was harshly criticized by fans. Yeah, that was uh, without warning. Yeah. They just turned it off. Yeah, and that's because they insane. couldn't fix their problem. At least when Nintendo did it, they gave everybody fair warning. Yeah. Yeah, this really sucks. Uh, yeah. What's going on? Uh, so Media Molecule isn't a thing anymore. They haven't been a thing since 2014. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're just they're just passing the Little Big Planet uh, IP around inside yeah. of Sony, and they're just not utilizing. Oh, it. You, well, Media Molecule is still around. It's tw- 2008 to 2014. That's the Little Big Planet series. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so they just they have, just haven't worked on it since 2014. Right. What are they working on now? Uh, dreams. Dreams. And that's not a thing either yeah. anymore. Okay. They did Tearaway. They did. Tearaway was. They did Little great. Big Planet, Tearaway, and Dreams. Yeah. So. Media Molecule. They have Come a on. they have a shtick. <laughs> Hopefully, they're doing something else with. Sam. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess that's all the news. Yeah. So that- I. Did not pick it. Oh, I have one. Okay. I knew I had one. I have one. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This is from Humankind. It says, imagine pitching this in a design crit today. And it is <laughs> the fucking Xbox yeah. original yeah. home screen. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, they don't. It is fucking insane. There's a word for this type of design philosophy. Uh... Is it Frutiger Arrow? Am, am I? What does that translate to? Like late nineties extreme? <laughs> like because that's what? Well, oh, okay, it's it's like this style. That's that's a blank page. Give it, gotta give it a second. I'm uh, running on a, a web browser right now. Okay, it's all this shit. Like okay. the early two thousands, like computer design. Got it. Yeah, everything's like super glossy and like bright yeah. and there's a lot of greens and stuff mm-hmm. and there's a lot of like cool gradients yeah and 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 uh the skeuomorphic like textures and stuff mm-hmm. i got you yeah a better times is zachary all right yeah uh, we're going to talk to you guys. Yes, let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolfden podcast over on the YouTube channel youtube.com Slash Wolf Den Podcast. For that, I'm going to say P- PJ Man with five months. Uh, justice for our Lord and Savior Sackboy. Our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Uh, okay. So last week's Wolf Den Podcast, we got Doomy Doomy who said, I was playing Forbidden West, the Horizon game. Yes. And they took it off PlayStation Plus as well. The game? I was so confused why I lost access, but then I saw that the remaster was... Co- oh, and I was uh, like, I am not paying for it. I will wait for it to come back to PlayStation Plus. Game is not good enough for me to spend money on it. <laughs> well, that- Forbidden West is the sequel. Did they take that off of PlayStation Plus? I have no idea. PlayStation Plus? Like the... the it's got to be premium. It's got to be premium. Yeah. Because like, it would make sense for them to have it on the in the collection, like to get you hyped for the the first game. Right. I'm looking it up now. Yeah. Uh, oh. type of game. Well, you look that up. Right. Uh, Mike J. File. Uh, I might be thinking out loud, but why don't companies go after stores like GameStop and other retro sellers uh, for selling games and making a profit? When say Nintendo takes down a website for fear of losing profit. But allow, uh, but allow in-person stores to charge for games without having to give anything to Nintendo. Does that make sense? I think there are currently no Horizon games available in the part of the PlayStation Extra. Or it's very confusing because yeah, I hate the way their website. It's hard to yeah. tell what is extra and yeah. what is not. But game companies did go after used game sellers. They go, used game sellers. They went after blockbuster nintendo famously sued blockbuster over renting game and they lost that yeah yeah one of the few ones that they lost yeah there's a there's actually like protections in place for like physical goods you know yeah you should be able to sell the stuff that you have yeah you know uh it just unfortunately companies abuse that yeah um but 
There's plenty. We talk all the time about the uh, Project Ten Dollars. What the fuck? What the, yeah, they call it? Yeah, Project Ten Dollars. Okay, yeah, where they they added stuff to the game that was a unique code that yeah. you had to uh, that you lost if you sold the game mm-hmm. or if you bought the game used. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of ways that they try to go after them, but they lost. And that they could lose. They lose stuff like that. Because it's a big company fighting another big company. Yeah. If it's a big company fighting a little company or a little guy, the little guy's going to lose. And that's uh, what ha- what's happening with emulation. Yeah. Lich says, did Bob know? Did Bob not know we've been purchasing a license for games for years now? He was talking about uh, California now, so they have to be very specific. Yeah. Yeah, for certain games, but when it's a physical good that you buy in a store, that's a physical good. Right. It's mine, and it should well, be that way. the disc is. The content on the disc is what you're licensing. Yeah, debatable. Legally. Legally. Now. Yeah. Funky Pinku says, uh, great pod, as always. Thanks, guys. No problem. Wolfilla Belma. Says the Digital Millennium Copyright Act stuff was fascinating. Good. Because you I need, feel like I, people are falling asleep. You need to know it. You know, this is the world we live in where everything's digital. Oh, there'll be plenty more where that came from. Yeah. You're never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> uh, Zachary PC, thanks for the prime. Now we're in the chats. Yeah. Fellas, make it good. I'm like basically laying down right now. <laughs> um, PJ Man says, I traveled for work, so I bought a Steam Deck dock to set it up in my room. What are your favorite deck games to play with horrible input lag on these shitty hotel TVs? You got to play a turn-based game. Yeah. Or... Something slow. Bellatro. Yeah. There you go. Um, I went to the Nintendo store last week, and they had Nintendo World Championship up. Uh Uh-huh. And a lot of the Mario games had less than an S rank on uh, on them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking plow through one <laughs> right now. And I picked up the controller. The input lag on the fucking monitor was insane. Really? For a game store. Yeah. So I immediately put it down. I was like, mm. I can't do this. It was, it was worse than I've ever seen on a TV. Yeah. The TV, the big TV that he has in the studio. Yeah. Also had terrible input lag, and I think this one was worse. And it was about the same size as that. You can calibrate on. that though, like a like the TV E has. Like you can calibrate that. How would you calibrate the input lag out of you it? You got to do it in the like in the system on the system. No, I think you can. You can you can do it in uh, Hi Fi Rush, right? And like rhythm games have mm-hmm. like a calibration, but like the system itself, there's not mm-hmm. there's nothing you. Can Put it in game mode. That the, actually act, works. Actually, game mode does work. Yeah. Uh, this TV, there is no saving it. Mm. The, the TVs at the Nintendo store, they could fucking do something. Yeah. Because that pull lag was completely unacceptable. Right. But E's TV, I'm pretty sure it was in game mode and still... It's just it's just too big. Yeah. It's just so big that there's... It takes too much for the, <laughs> for the, for the game to get all yeah. the way up there. Isn't there Apple leaks all the time ahead of the official announcement? Why is why are we talking about that? Uh, except for Boa said, what is your opinion on Apple potentially facing the worst leak since the iPhone 4 was left at a bar? And what happens? Uh, what is your theory about what might have happened? I, apparently, a um, couple of Russians got their hands on the MacBook, the, the new MacBook Pro 14-inch with the M4 chips inside. I am looking at it right now. I'm afraid to show it on screen. It should, the, here's the thing. I don't think it's the worst leak. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. It might be the worst leak since that, but uh, it's not a big deal because it's just a MacBook. Yeah. It looks the fucking same. Yeah. I think that there was a bigger deal back then because the iPhone, the iPhone three to the iPhone four, like was a pretty substantial like jump. That was the, yeah, that not was a just huge in terms of, like, jump. Not just in terms of like, you know, chipset and like, you know, uh, processing power and stuff but also the look of the device was substantially yeah. different from any iphone previously released 
if this MacBook looked different or was a tablet, for yeah. example, then this would be a huge deal. But it's literally just it's a literally MacBook. just the, what we're holding in our hands with an M4 chip. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. It has the yeah. same exact ports on the so. side. It's, it's not very interesting. Honestly, I could have made a YouTube and been like, "I got the MacBook," yeah. and and just said that this was that. Except it would be dirty. Yeah. There were other. There are plenty of leaks uh, on the iPhones leak all the time. Yeah, that one was. A, I remember that one was a big deal because it was yeah. like that looks so different. Yeah, and also again, they found it in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Someone left it. Yeah, the last version of Yuzu PC Android Linux just showed up on NSW2U. What the fuck is that? You can, it's very easy to Google around for the last last version of Yuzu, yeah. Ryujinx, Citra. Citra. Uh, now there's Suyu, which is the same yeah. as Yuzu. Uh, there was a third one, too. I think Google Pixel 3 leaked. Uh, there, the next Google Pixel leaked. Is yeah. Um, finally caught a live stream. That's a fan from the UK. Oh, thank you. Oh, good day, Governor. Good day. Shrimp on the Pearl bar, barbie. Maybe, mate. <laughs> That's all the same. Sue you? Yes, they they did that on purpose. I want a clamshell RG three five XX SP now or wait for the MiU thing to finally come out. I love the idea of the MiU Mini. That's a clamshell. Yeah, I was waiting for that for a long time. Unfortunately, Amber Nick is a big company, a bigger company, and they could beat them to the market, and they yeah. did. Uh, and unfortunately, I think MiU's software is falling behind, and their chipsets are falling behind. Mm -hmm. So it sucks because I liked their stuff first, and they just cannot keep up. Right. But uh, I think the SP you might like better, honestly. The only issue is that the MiU Mini has thumbsticks, and you're not going to have that. But yeah. I bet you it's going to be worse. That's my hot take. The Ambernick is big enough so you can play Pokemon one handed. I learned that this weekend. One hand? How do you yeah. do that? Because sometimes I have to like pick up my bag and like carry it. Uh, but I, you know, if I get into a battle, it's just literally like pressing the face buttons. How far into the game did you? Not far. Like I think I got to Brock's gym, but like my Pokemon were like low level, so I just kept grinding most. Isn't of the that the first gym? Technically, it's the second gym because the gym in Viridian City is locked. Ah, uh, okay. So you got to like keep going to the next gym. Okay. Yeah. We need to get consumer protections for digital goods. It needs to be treated as another change in medium, such as VHS to DVD or cassette to CD. The digital format was always an inevitability and should be treated as just another medium and protected as such. Yeah, I think it's really hard. Or, I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do. Yeah. I think that's what that California law was like, you know, trying yeah. to make people aware of. Yeah, I, I understand the uh, the thought behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just sucks that we're going from uh, having we're, we're we're losing our property basically. The yeah, thing that was once ours mm -hmm. uh, because of this new digital world, which is more convenient. Yeah, in a lot of ways, uh, we are. Uh, losing the the it's not ours anymore yeah and that's crazy to think about mm -hmm. in in this fucking goddamn country yeah where we're so protective over our property yeah. that we're willing to just give it up yeah i wonder if the eu is going to take steps that will benefit us all i it's insane to me um i can't imagine telling myself from like 15 years ago in the future uh you will have less rights than they do in the in your yeah <laughs> <laughs> their government fights for their protections yes. more than yours does yes what is your guys favorite piece of tech you own Uh, the the waveform podcast did a thing where they all brought in a piece of non tech, and I could not think of a piece of non of a single item that I could that I would bring in. Like yeah, something like that, everything is technology. Yeah, you know? no, 
they didn't really have like set yeah. rules, but I would have I would specify no power button or power yeah. cable or batteries or anything. So that gets rid of everything in my yeah. life. Maybe my flannel. I wear a flannel all the time. I would probably have to bring in like you know an action figure or something then. Well, it should be something that you like use all the time. Right. My vesties, they're comfortable. <laughs> yeah, my, like my something, hoodie. Yeah, literally something like yeah. that, or like your backpack or something. Yeah. Uh, a piece of tech. It's his espresso machine. Yes. I don't know. I can't. I can't like say like one piece of tech is like better than every other. It's piece definitely of tech. something that I use so much that I cannot live without. It might be my espresso machine, but. There's other. There's got to be something else that is like a modern convenience that yeah that would ruin my life if I didn't have it. Yeah, because like I use all my tech into like individually but equally. You know, I have my iPad for you know reading and YouTube and stuff. I have. We're privileged know, with yes a plethora of tech. Yeah. I mean, there is. I mean, I'm on my MacBook all the time. Doesn't Will love his Steam Tech? I do love my Steam. <laughs> I'm a PC gamer. Is your coffee bean grinder tech? It has an on button. Yeah. And, and it's powered. I have a hand grinder, but I would I don't use it. So I I, w- I wouldn't want to say yeah. that, that is like the, the thing. The camera on your phone or just your phone? What? Oh, as a piece of tech. Yeah, I love my phone. My phone is awesome. Yeah. Uh but I couldn't live without my a uh, MacBook. Yeah. Like I can live with a PC, but like Without a computer, I I would be right. Dead. Yeah, and a Mac computer makes it a, a million times. Yeah, easier. even though I got I fell through a rabbit hole of me trying to get my Bellatro save file <laughs> back, and man, you cannot get into the files of an iPhone. Yeah, you just cannot. Yep, and that fucking sucks because an Android phone, you plug it in, boop, here's everything. Yeah, and you can fuck around with everything. Anyway. Got a warning. Hopefully, that doesn't mess anything up. Anything. Yeah. Uh, your life would be ruined without your espresso maker. Yeah. It's a toss up between my MacBook and my espresso maker. Bob, I any have to ch- go to the store. Any chance uh, you've seen those extreme rate clicky buttons for the Steam Deck? Yeah. Uh, they've been out for a while. Okay. I just, I hated opening the Steam Deck. Getting, yeah. well, no, getting the buttons wouldn't be so bad. I just, I just don't need it. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it that badly. Uh, my sister loves her steamer. The smile it gives when she uses it. that's weird. Like the the clothing steamer or like the frother? Oh, maybe they mean a frother. Yeah. Because like I have a steamer, I just use an iron. Yeah, I know H- how to Hannah use it. Hannah uses the steamer all of the time. Like, I am I am shocked that like most of my friends don't know how to use an iron. Most dudes don't use an iron. It's just, I mean, it's a pain in the ass. You got to set up the ironing board. You got to set up the iron. And I stuff. haven't ironed a shirt in a really long time. I, I barely ironed. I, I have a now. spray. I used to all of the time. Downey makes a spray, a wrinkle remover spray. That's like really good in a pinch. You don't want to like bust out the iron and stuff. I just don't go anywhere anymore. Yeah, that's I don't true need to. Too, yeah. If I need to go somewhere, maybe I'll iron. I, I really, really only do. iron shirts when we go out to dinner with my parent, with mm-hmm. our parents. Yes. Yeah. That's the only time I will iron a shirt. Yes. And then I play my favorite game where I put on an outfit, I go to my wife and I say, will my mom have something to say about this outfit? <laughs> yes. I, we say, what is she, what, <laughs> what, guess br- what she's going to say <laughs> yeah. this time. I, I did that with, uh, it, it's, it's our mother and our friend, Jerry. <laughs> one of them, if I put on something that's not just a fucking black t-shirt, yeah. what are they going to have to say <laughs> today about whatever bullshit yeah. I got going on? That happened with Hannah was wearing like a sweater. Yeah. She's like, you think they're going to make fun of me? I was like, why would anybody make fun of you? They're only yeah. going to make fun of me. And the second we showed up, Jerry goes, hey, nice sweater. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a teacher or yeah. something. A, go- a good life hack <laughs> is in order in order for our mother to not say anything about your outfit, wear something she got you. Your outfit needs Very to be. Very good point. Your outfit needs to be 90%. <laughs> She bought it. Very yeah. good. Good point. Which means um, I got to bust out the girdle because everything she buys me is too tight. She doesn't realize. 
Um, dude, I also do that check with my roommate. Mom, <laughs> mom's always got something to say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys clearly have an Italian mother. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we sure do. <laughs> um. Well, anyway, I guess that's it. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for me. tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for being a part of our family therapy session. Uh, as always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden or youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want but if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as apple Podcasts, spotify pocket cast youtube podcast audible.com even but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms I have a video up on Thursday. I'm doing an update on the OLED Steam Deck and Switch, and everybody always asks me about those. Right. Uh, I am going to film that right now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be streaming on Thursday. I will UFO 50 because I like that game. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Go say hello to AJ. He's playing Pokemon, doing raids. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.